Welcome to another episode of Fundy Tidings. I'm your host, Jay Reamer, and with me today is Barb Burley. I've known Barb for a long time, and I have been looking forward to this show. Uh, we're going to be talking about the Ross Museum, which is um, uh, near and dear to my heart. And uh, But before we begin, I just want to um, introduce Barb. Welcome to the show, Barb, thank and you. thank it's you for... Absolutely our pleasure on behalf of the board of the Ross Memorial Museum. Barb has had long and varied management experience within the public and volunteer sections, most of which have been at the senior management level. She was an assistant deputy minister in the Department of Community Services of the Government of Nova Scotia until her retirement in 2004. Following retirement, she moved to New Brunswick and has been very active in the volunteer section at the local, national, and international levels. Locally, she served on the board of the Passamaquoddy Lodge Nursing Home, served as vice chair of Sunbury Shores Arts and Nature Center, founded and serves as president of Jeunesse Musicale Center de St. Andrews, serves as chair of the board of directors of the Ross Memorial Museum, and sings with the Shire Town Singers, a local choral group. Nationally, she is serving her second four-year term on the Board of Directors of the Canada Council for the Arts and sits on the Executive Committee and serves as Chair of the Governance and Nominating Committee. Internationally, she serves as an advisor to the International Federation of Choral Music. That is a mouthful. <laughs> and we are so lucky to have you here and to be part of the, of the, um, of the museum. Um, I think because this is the first show we've actually dedicated to the museum, it might be a good opportunity to give sort of a historic perspective of the, of the museum and, and um, what really makes it tick. Okay. Uh, first of all, as I said uh, at the outset, it's, a, it's an absolute pleasure to, uh, to have this time with you. Um, as you said, we've we've worked together and we've on volunteer projects in, in throughout the, uh, the the time that I've been living in St. Andrews. Um, the Ross Memorial Museum uh, I became involved with uh, over three years ago now uh, as a board member. Certainly before that time, I was uh, uh, I was involved uh, strictly in a volunteer basis because I would assist with different projects and so on. Um, but the, the Ross Memorial Museum is very special uh, to the town of St. Andrews. Um, it, uh, the couple that uh, it's uh, named after uh, were Henry Phipps and uh, Sarah Juliet Ross, who were an American couple who traveled to, to this area in the early 20th century, who absolutely fell in love with uh, this area. Uh, and. Um, we'll probably talk about this uh, in, a, in a few minutes, but the Ross Memorial Museum is, is really, uh, as much as it provides an opportunity uh, for the town and for visitors from abroad to, uh, to be able to experience uh, the collection uh, and uh, the wealth of the collection, it's also a wonderful love story. Mm -hmm. um, the Rosses were, uh, uh, did not have children. They traveled extensively. Um, they actually took the first cruise around the world. Really? They did. And uh, they actually traveled by car, uh, if you can imagine, in the very early days uh, of the 20th century, uh, from St. Andrews to California, which would be quite a trek in those days. Yes. They purchased a home uh, after having a wonderful opportunity to uh, have a picnic on the top of a, a, a crest um, in, in Shamcook, and they purchased a home which was called Ross Mount. And that's what they used, uh, that uh, residence was used as a summer home during their stays here. Um, they uh, subsequently, they, uh, as they collected around the world, uh, artifacts, treasures, furniture, uh, and so on, which comprises the collection uh, at uh, the Ross uh, Museum. They purchase uh, specifically um, a house here in the center of, of the town plat uh, to house all of their acquisitions. And it is that house that we 
we have today is called Chestnut Hall, and uh, that is the place where we celebrate the Ross's lives. It's amazing, really, when you think about um, the, the planning that must have had to have been done, because, you know, a lot of people may go around the world and collect things and you sort of stick it in the storage locker, but this is kind of a fancy storage locker. and. Yeah. Um, to have given it to the town is uh, an example of generosity that really is is almost boundless. It's 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 quite extraordinary because the gift keeps on giving Absolutely. generation after generation. Um, the Henry Phipps Ross was an Episcopalian minister, uh, and um, part of his life experience was to uh, to express and the goodness of the world and so on. Um, um, Sarah Juliet was from a wealthy family and, and probably, guessing some of this stuff, uh, probably was an enabler in relation to some of their travel. And, and <laughs> an enabler. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> <laughs> Try to be politically correct these days. Anyway, um, but they, um, um, they really had an appreciation for um, um, history and culture. Uh, of not only American history and culture, but all of the areas that they traveled throughout the world. And they wanted to share that uh, with uh, people in perpetuity. Um, but they also, uh, upon 1945 is when they died, and actually within days of each other. So you can see the love story yeah. continued from the time they got together until they, they deceased. But they also gave to um, the um, hospital in this area, they gave to the Quaker Society in the United States, and they support money that supports the local library as well mm. as uh, the Ross Museum. So while we're going to talk about the Ross Museum, I, I just think that their uh, philanthropy was very, very broad-based. Yeah, it, it, it's extraordinary, really. I mean, when you think about uh, the fact that we have a public library in a town this size, it, it's really, it, it's, it's remarkable. Not to take away from the fact that to have a house museum of this caliber is, um, is astounding, really. I mean, Absolutely. and so many people take, you know, when we live in a community, we take so much for granted that, that we see every day. Exactly. But when, 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 when we've had a chance to travel around and see what other communities have to offer, uh, the uniqueness of the of the Ross Museum is 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 really it it really, it's it's kind of a neat. Well, I know this is probably a, a turnabout here in relation to from from an interview perspective, <laughs> but uh, I I know for a fact of of your close ties to the Ross Museum over the years, and the fact that you actually did an appraisal of of uh, the collections. And so rather than you ask me about the collections, <laughs> I'm going to do a, a face about and say, I think that you are probably uniquely more qualified to talk about the collections component than I. Well, <clears throat> that's very kind of you. I, um, I did have a chance to, uh, I was asked, uh, oh, about 30 years ago when, when Ruth Spicer was the, still the director. She was the founding director, as I recall. And, and they uh, wanted to sort of have an, a, an idea of what, what the collection comprised and, and sort of some, some identify certain things. And, and so I was working at Sotheby's at the time, or maybe I just finished. And uh, I came up uh, to visit my folks. And while I was here, I, I did this. And I discovered um, a remarkable collection. Uh, not the least of which is the house itself. Absolutely. I mean, it, it is a masterpiece of, of sort of Georgian, uh, I guess really, well, Georgian architecture. Uh, it is a brick house, which is unusual in this town. Yes. It's in remarkable shape, uh, in no small part due to the careful uh, maintenance that the museum staff has shown over the year and the town itself. Uh, but um, the collection itself is reflective of the, um, the 
uh, the travels that, that the Rosses made. It, 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 has, um, it, it also is not atypical of the kind of collection that you would find in a Loyalist house dated from the 1830s or right. 40s. So it isn't filled with modern paintings and, and, and that sort of thing. It's really fitted to the period, which is extraordinary. Now, there are a few exceptions, but uh, I think that that's part of the, the fabric of an ongoing um, you know, collection. Now, this collection is um, what you call stagnant <clears throat> in that it can neither be added to right. nor, nor uh, can pieces be sold. Right. Um, for uh, really any purpose, um, unlike some museums. But it has um, the kinds of things that you would find in a house in the mid-19th century or even a little bit later. So there's a, uh, there's a lovely collection of furniture, so all the rooms are furnished as they would have been. And there isn't, a, there isn't anything missing. It's like, oh, wouldn't it be nice if there were a bed in the bedroom? That's all been looked after beautifully. And the decorative arts, meaning the porcelains and the silver and all of that kind of thing, which really were purchased around the world, but still tend to have kind of a loyalist feel about them, uh, are um, complement the furniture and the, and the paintings that have been carefully okay. selected. Uh, actually, I believe that Mrs. Ross was quite a painter herself. Yes. And there's some of her works um, hanging and uh, they it was it's just it's it's an interesting collection because whether you're wanting to look at a piece of history or you're wanting to look at the concept of putting a collection together from one couple's point of view mm -hmm. or whether you want to study um, 19th century pottery and porcelain or furniture or paintings or prints uh, or even rugs. They have some lovely rugs Sorry. there. Um, it's, it's a place that you can find everything. It, it's very unusual that way in that it's all incorporated. And, and when things, when I think when house museums are set up as houses, it's quite different than if you go to a museum where the paintings are in one section and the furniture <laughs> is in another. They're not set up as, as rooms. So, um, I think it's, it's a fantastic collection, and, and from what I can gather, uh, more and more uh, people visit it to study it as a collection, which I think is really extraordinary. And with the, um, with the uh, improving of technology over the course of time, uh, I'm sure that, um, that the collection will be more accessible um, to people who may not have the opportunity even to ever visit North America. When we have a, a future opportunity, I'd like to, uh, to elaborate on that point. Yes, I think for another show, um, we could probably talk about the, you know, the, 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 the new bells and whistles Absolutely. that the museum has. But um, as it is now, I think that the, um, the museum is a jewel in the crown of St. Andrews. It's, it's, in some ways, it's, it's, it is familiar to many of us because of the Christmas show and all of the things that the local people get involved in. And I think that it is actually because of that kind of involvement that the local community can uh, share with the museum, it provides an opportunity for volunteerism. So with that, piece of information. I'm going to turn the baton back, back to you. <laughs> because um, I think volunteerism is, is the, it's really the heart of a community. Um, we have to be aware of what's going on in our communities. And by volunteering with various organizations, it's a way that we can become connected. And I think that the museum is a, it's a really fun way to connect to the community. To, um to follow up on, on uh, the discussion with regard to the collections, uh, I would just add uh, one, I, I guess, one uh, item. Um, walking into the front door of, of the museum, um, you could almost feel that you could live there because, as you say, uh, the rooms are, are 
set in a way that uh, they're functional. They're, they're the way people would live. They, uh, they have all the accoutrement, if you will, of, of, uh, of living in that era. Um, the dining room is set. The, you know, it looks like you're, you could have a meal. But uh, the, there is a room upstairs called the exhibit room, which is an area that uh, is set uh, that time has been taken in ca great care to actually uh, portray the life uh, uh, travels of uh, the Rosses uh, through pictorials and through uh, actually a bilingual uh, uh, explanation of, of the same. And some artifacts are there as well. Um, but if you sort of go around the room, it will, it will actually take you on their, their love story, their journey. It's actually not a bad way to begin the, the tour because once you kind of get a, 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 an idea of uh, what made these people tick, then as you tour the, the house, which as you say is set up just as though you could, you, could, you really could yes, move right in. Yes, you really in. could, yes. Um, uh, it gives you a different perspective. You appreciate things like you, you just things like you think about wh why, how did they go about selecting that? Or Absolutely. And there are two huge portraits uh, of uh, of the Rosses as you come into the the. Uh, well, they're front not foyer. that huge actually because the Rosses themselves were quite short. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they were, they were short, but the, the paintings are quite large. Yeah. <laughs> um, Anyway, um, the, as with uh, most organizations that uh, uh, have minimal staff or are dependent upon the support of the community to, uh, to continue, um, the Ross Museum is no exception to that. And uh, the, the museum uh, is supported uh, by a huge number of volunteers for mm. a very small area. Um, we can talk more about um, sort of the some specific uh, activities uh, that uh, volunteers get involved in in a few moments, but we have we're very very fortunate to have an arm's length organization called the Friends of the Ross Memorial Museum, which is um, um, enables the the museum to. Uh, uh, because we do not we do not uh, fundraise in and of ourselves except for donations at the door. We don't charge admission. Right. Um, so we we do appreciate uh, uh, donations at the door, and the town. Uh, the the uh, Ross has left um, uh, a trust to provide ongoing monies uh, to the museum. But, you know, as time went on, and of course the uh, downturn of the economy on investments uh, Im had an impact, a negative impact on, on that fund. So the town actually now provides 70% of our funding wow. uh, versus at one time the, uh, the uh, fund from the Ross is funded as 100%. So we're very aware that uh, we need to be careful with public funds. Um, so the, the Friends of the, of the Ross assist uh, for those special items that uh, we, we really need and want to enhance the, uh, the uh, visitorship uh, of the museum uh, or to do special, uh, special projects. Um, there are a number of volunteers through the, Ross, through the Friends of the Ross and uh, we rely on that relationship, which is arm's length. Obviously, we, uh, we can't sort of get too close to uh, uh, managing our funders. Um, but without them, we would not be able to do many of the things that, uh, the special things that uh, we, would, we do. Uh, for example, this past year, um, we needed uh, a new big flat screen TV because we show, uh, we show, uh, 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 movies during the winter right. uh, and we show uh, e uh, examples of their travels and so on and so forth and our the little TV we had was you know kind of uh, going uh, it was it was needed to be upgraded well. and the, the friends purchased that uh, yeah. uh, for us and uh, and it's wonderful because it, it provides a, a much better experience so it's sort of the friends because I remember uh, having uh, chaired the friends for quite a few years that it was for things that were sort of 
special one-off items That's that correct. wouldn't fit into a, to the budget, but were would enhance the whole That's correct. the whole thing. Um, I I because I don't want to I don't want to have to take too much time away from the from the Christmas um, uh, open house, which has been such an integral part. And I know that the Friends does help uh, to fund to fund that. Um, and I think that it's the the whole dynamic of the Christmas open house is uh, illustrative of how important the museum is in the community for community spirit and um, just sheer pleasure. Mm -hmm. And what what is going on with the with the uh, Christmas open house this year? This year, uh, well, just <clears throat> two short things. Uh, one is to give you an example. We throughout the year we we have approximately six thousand visitors. Uh, wow. to the to the museum so that's throughout the entire year um, so uh, we uh, uh, Christmas time uh, uh, is is special in that part of the celebrations in St. Andrews uh, there is a week set aside where there are special activities the Ross Memorial Museum has has over the last 30 years uh, and we're celebrating the 30th year of the Christmas celebrations, uh -huh. uh, has opened the doors to the museum uh, during the Christmas time through inviting volunteers to sponsor uh, a room, each of the rooms uh, in the museum, as decorators using their own uh, decorations, uh, but based around a theme that is uh, predetermined. and. The, this is done, um, the uh, children then from all of the local schools are invited uh, during uh, the daytime uh, to come and to visit, uh, to see all of the, uh, the Christmas uh, decorations. And there are special, uh, there are cookies that are made that are um, um, dietarily friendly to all children. Uh, and uh, the children all come and they get a cookie and so on. Last year, for example, we had 700 children alone uh, who visited during the Christmas, uh, the four-day period. In the evening and late afternoon and evening, um, again, the doors are, are opened for the public. Um, it is an absolutely magical experience. If you ever think, well, I can't really get in the Christmas spirit, visit, please visit, because each room is, is a story. The lights uh, are fantastic. We have artists um, who uh, play musical instruments, um, and we have storytellers downstairs to uh, to and don't the Shire Town singers come and by and the Shire, sing? I was getting to that. <laughs> uh, the Shire Town singers who uh, have a, a Christmas uh, concert in and of uh, their own right, they come and they uh, present part of their Christmas concert and uh, sort of uh, line up up the uh, winding staircase and provide uh, uh, some of their uh, their concert. So it, it's an absolutely wonderful experience. I happen to have brought along. Um, oh. This is uh, this year. The uh, celebration starts uh, uh, as you can see. It's on the 28th of uh, November, and it runs through till the 1st of December. And uh, we're really, really looking forward to this this year um, because it's our 30th year. Um, it's the theme is celebrating 30 years at Christmas, but each of the decorators were at liberty to choose one uh, of the the themes of, of from that 30 year uh, a collection of, mm -hmm. of themes. It's amazing to me, um, being a museum person, um, that uh, that this it's a very small staff. I mean, you've got two people uh, at, at the museum who can. Um, sort of take away things that would be really in harm's way um, with a pack of people coming through decorating up. But so much is left exactly the way exactly. it was. And to pull, a, pull something like that off year in and year out is remarkable. Yeah. 
I don't know of one other place where that happens. I mean, I'm not saying it doesn't happen, but it is an incredible feat. So for people to have the opportunity as volunteers to participate in that kind of a thing and to actually work around, you know what it does is, is that, it, well, it's just a cool thing to do, but <laughs> it also, it provides people an opportunity on how they might decorate their own houses. You know, it's, it's oh, how can we use Granny's China, um, you know, uh, and, and because it's always, it's all, all it is is a, is a dust catcher in the, in the clavet. Let's bring it out and, and, and use it because it, 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 by actually participating in something like that, it gives people a, a different perspective and a comfort zone that they wouldn't have had otherwise. Well, and, and as you can appreciate, um, it, is, it is an unusual experience from a museum perspective to allow people behind the barrier, uh, if you will. Um, but uh, our staff, um, Marco Sackett and Carrie Cross, are dedicated staff. They work very, very hard all year round. Um, but they not only sort of take things away, um, those kind of unique things that might get broken, uh, but as you say, the majority of, of artifacts are, are in place. They also assist uh, assist the decorators, you know, if, uh, if in questions and answering things or what can they do, what and, and not do kind of thing. Um, but it's an opportunity. We feel it's an opportunity for the public, the volunteers, you and I, and other people to actually touch things, to yeah. get close, uh, to to really appreciate the value uh, of uh, the collections in the museum that most people normally can only see from a it, distance. It's, a, it's an amazing opportunity to make that sort of a connection because there, I find, that, you know, when you go into a museum, the artifacts are uh, separated from the viewer and, and necessarily so. This gives, this, this is sort of a, it lets the curtain down and, and have a, a chance. And through the careful oversight of, of Margot and, and Carrie, it makes it possible for this to happen. Absolutely. And, and for volunteers like you who've done such an amazing job. The, um, we've, we've sort of run out of time for this particular oh. segment, but... Um, We're I, just getting started. I, well, yes, I know this is, this, is, this is part of what happens. Father time marches on. But I hope you'll come back and... Um, Again, and we can talk about some of the other aspects of the museum because so many people want to know more about it and how they can become connected. So uh -huh. um, thank you for, uh, for sharing this time with us, Barb. And thank you for beaming in for yet another episode of Fundy Tidings. And I look forward to seeing you again soon.